thank you very much. Thank you very much. My name is Garrett Johnson, and I am a black male. Shocking, right? More important to me, my nephews are black males. One of my nephews joined me today. Jamari, would you stand up? Stay, stay standing. Stay, Jamari. Jamari, stay standing. I need, I need eight other people. We're going to get some exercise this morning. I need eight other people to just stand up really quickly. Just eight people. All right? Eight. That's eight. Okay. Two, four, six, eight. Perfect. Everyone else can sit down. Except for Jamari. Stand up. All right. So everyone close your eyes. A little zen moment. And imagine with me that you are a black male. All right, open your eyes. My nephew and I, and the two of you, you're in the front row, you get extra credit points. We will graduate from high school. The six of you are screwed. You can have a seat. It's shocking to think that Four in 10 black males in Florida graduate from high school each year. Four in 10. As Nate mentioned, I am a native of Tampa, born and raised in East Tampa, Belmont Heights. And I grew up with a sports background. My parents have been youth uh, track coaches for over 30 years, uh, spending every summer working with inner city youth to try and give them an alternative to uh, the other things that they could be getting into that, that weren't very positive. And as was mentioned, I attended Florida State University, and so you can assume accurately that I am a rabid football fan, and I'm actually heading up for the Clemson game this weekend, but don't tell my co-founders, they think I'm here for Ted. So I grew up doing sports, and one thing that I learned in sports is that whether in the football arena, on the basketball court, on the track, when the, level, when the field is level and the rules are clearly defined, black males can compete on par with or exceed their peers. But unfortunately, only four in 10 graduate from high school each year. If we accept the premise that black males are just as capable, just as cognitively gifted as anyone else, then we have to conclude that our educational system and our own communities are failing black males. So what do we do about this? How do we change the arc of this story? Unfortunately, I don't think that there are any silver bullets. There's no easy answers. I recently, as of a year ago, founded a technology company, which I never imagined that I would do in my wildest dreams. I was headed off to law school, you know, political background, and I stumbled upon this problem for my nephew's school. And so I moved out to California where my company is based, and we are trying to solve a problem for teachers and for a much larger population. I never imagined that I would be a technology founder because no one that I knew had a technology company. Certainly no one that I ever grew up with in East Tampa. But I have one. And one of the things that I've noticed uh, is that there are too few people who look like us, like me and my nephew, who are building technology companies. This is the dream team for the NBA. This is the dream team for Facebook. It's 
really shocking when you look at their net worth, the aspirations that far too many black males see as their ticket out of poverty and the path to social mobility. But as you see with the Facebook Dream Team, if Mark, Bucker, Mark Zuckerberg woke up this morning with LeBron's bank account, we would have to put him on suicide watch. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just remarkable to think the, the disparity and the impact that one can have when you are aspiring to solve major problems. Not to say that basketball is anything, there's anything wrong with basketball. Sports are incredible and it provides so many transferable skills. But when you look at the aggregate impact, if it were measured by net worth, the Facebook's dream team accounts for 98.5% of this slide. And so when you, when you think about the challenges that we face as a community, as a city, as a society, in communities like East Tampa, where I grew up, there are so many challenges and problems that people who look like me and who look like many of you are uniquely qualified and uniquely positioned to solve because those problems uniquely and disproportionately impact our communities. And so we need to introduce people who are innovators and thought leaders to people like this. You know, when you see his picture, you know, some of you might think that their horn is coming out of his head. Or when you see this picture, some of you might think there's horns coming out of his head. But one of the things that they have in common is that they're both angels. They're actually both angel investors. Jet Bush has invested in our company. So not only do we need to train young inner city youth and youth in general to be the thought leaders and innovators of the future, to be the architects of the next 21st century economy, but we need to connect non-traditional investors, some people in this room, to those innovators, to help back their ideas, to help them take ideas in rapid fashion from a concept to a million or billion dollar company. The opportunity is there. The ideas are there, the innovators are there. The question is, will we seize that opportunity? I will end my talk with a poem by one of the amazing storytellers uh, of our lifetime and possibly of American history. And her name is Maya Angelou. You may write me down in history with your bitter, bitter twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still like dust, I'll rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Cause I walk like I've got oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like moons and like suns with the certainty of tides, just like hope springing high, still I'll rise. Do you want to see me broken? Bow head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops weakened by soulful cries. Does my haughtiness offend you? Don't you take it awful hard, cause I laugh like I've got gold mines digging in my own backyard. You may shoot me with your words, you may cut me with your eyes, you may kill me with your hatefulness, but still like air I'll rise. Does my sexiness upset you? Does it come as a surprise that I dance like I've got diamonds at the meeting of my thighs? Out of the hurts of history's shame, I rise. Up from a past that's rooted in pain, I rise. I am a black ocean leaping and wide, welling and swelling, I bear in the tide. Leaving behind the nights of terror and fear, I rise. Into a daybreak that's wondrously clear, I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave, I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise. 
I am excited because I am encouraging my nephew and other young people who look like him in neighborhoods in Florida and around the country to rise to the expectations, to rise to the ambitions that they have for themselves and that we all have for them. And as a city, as a state, I hope that we will rise to the opportunity uh, and encourage all young people, irrespective of their zip code, uh, to be the thought leaders and the architects of the 21st century. I hope we can and I hope we will, and we indeed must. Thank you very much. Thank you.